Hey there, this is Charlotte Narbony, and here's another edition of Travels Around My Kitchen. Today, it's all about vinaigrette. Vinaigrette that is so simple, you don't have to measure, and I promise you this recipe, you will never buy that bottled stuff again. The most important thing is uh, the quality of the ingredients. Good vinegar, good olive oil, good mustard. That's really it. You can add a garlic, and of course you're gonna add salt and pepper. Uh, I, let me get into a word about uh, balsamic vinegar. Please, let's not, don't waste this recipe or uh, you don't, on the fancy, fancy stuff, but buy a decent red wine vinegar instead. I, I mean, I could go on about balsamic vinegar, but the only good balsamic vinegar is an expensive one, and there's no need to go there. These are the simplest ingredients in the world, and it makes the simplest sauce. It's a matter of measuring, it's proportions, and, base, and the secret is out, it's two to one. So two parts of oil to one part of vinegar, salt and pepper, boom, done, gone. So um, again, you can do it in a, a jar and put it in the refrigerator for later use. It will last eh, it pre pretty much indefinitely. If you add a clove of garlic in, then of course you have to remove the garlic after about one week because that will turn rancid. So I'm, you can do this also in, right directly into your salad bowls. Uh, and if I have time, I'll do both today. But for now, remember I said don't measure. You know, it, it's a it's a quarter of a teaspoon of, uh, of mustard if you really feel you have to. Can you see me? Well, there, just drop it in. And you know, I'm really happier when you use a freshly ground pepper. There's just so much flavor. Think about it. The oils are released as you grind. Ditto for salt, and I use coarse salt, and sea salt, and I don't use iodide. All right, there we go. I'm gonna skip the garlic for today because I'd have to peel it. I don't want it. So watch, I'm putting that in. I'm gonna do it like that. There, I'm gonna put the lid on. Make sure your jar is clean. Oh, look, great to pull. Let's use the right lid. Okay, and I'm gonna shake heartily for just a few seconds. Boom, done. There, now I've got my olive oil. I'm using a California olive oil. I, I mean, I could go on for hours about olive oil and I know very little compared to what real olive oil experts. I can tell you a good extra virgin olive oil uh, from California, France, um, Italy is just wonderful. And I'm going to add twice as much olive oil as I did the vinegar. And the way you know this is because oil and vinegar will not mix unless they're shaken immediately. So you put twice as much olive oil in as you do vinegar. Once you have that done, boom, done. Okay, there we go. Put the lid back on. Make sure it's on tight. Well, you are gonna be unhappy with the results. There we go. When you leave this, once the oil settles down, or separ it'll separate, and you can tell exactly how much vinegar you have and how much olive oil you have. To be sure about what you're doing, take a taste. Just to make sure that you're not, that you're not, don't have it too vinegary or too oily. That's not bad. So remember, Puma, my late French mother-in-law used to say, peu mais bon. This is, this is a perfect example, little but good. We've used good quality ingredients and I've got fresh greens here. They're washed, of course. And in this case, if I had been doing it for an individual bowl or even this, I would have put the oil and vinegar down here. And if I was doing it ahead, I would just lay the greens lightly on top and just before serving I would uh, just before serving I would mix it and then but for this case now I'm going to put some greens here let me use this I'll use the big bowl you never know who might show up for salad and just put your greens in there I'm using a mixture I love greens and no I don't use the uh, iceberg there's so many available today uh, organic, non-organic, uh, they're just they're just so readily available and year-round, depending on on which ones you get. Your your leaves should be dry. These aren't as dry as I'd like. I'm gonna pat them dry a little bit more, like that. And then that's it. Boom. I will add. I will dress. Put some more salt and pepper on. 
and I'll finish. Shake it up and just pour it. And I don't, you don't want it saturated. Just put it over like that. Boom, done. So, see, I'm just tossing lightly. And I promise you, this is going to be good. There we go. I don't make it ahead. I don't dress it ahead. I can make it ahead. I don't dress it ahead. That is not bad. You might want a little salt. And imagine that you have your fabulous salad. You have a bit of prosciutto left. This is really good prosciutto. And then some brie. Now imagine this. Of course, I, the bread, I have to go find the bread. But the brie, the prosciutto, and the salad. You can have that for supper. You can have it for lunch. And, you know, eat it anytime. It's just, it's just too good not to have. Again, Charlotte Narvity here. Been delighted to spend these few mo moments with you. You can check me out on my blog. I write at medium.com at Charlotte Narbonne, and I would love to have you sign up and follow me. I'll, I'll post this recipe for you in here and for all the, my readers, and I look forward to chatting with you again.